It was back in the early 90s. I was in high school and I had to write a paper. It was about mental health. And I asked the question, are people who we call crazy really crazy or are they just experiencing something real that the rest of us can't see? So about eight months ago, um, someone came up to me and asked me if I would create a painting about mental health. I realized this would be a really good opportunity for for me to paint something about my own story. I had the chance to go to really good academic schools, but I chose Perry College of Art in Connecticut. Then I went to Philadelphia College of Textiles and Science in Philly. And it's funny because I can remember in high school, um, the guy I dated had a cousin who would talk to us about the Bible all the time. So I have just a little sense of God and I feel like I carried that with me during those years. I mean, they were good years. But when I lost touch, with all of that, it seems like things took a turn for the worse. I took a year off college. I was just doing everything that I could possibly do without restraint, partying, drinking, um, just connecting with all kinds of people. It's opening up myself really to, to dark things. Um, and you know, over time this progressively, I made room for it, you know? I, I, I welcomed dark music, I welcomed um, things that kind of ruminated over like death. And I made room for this in my life and I started to really identify with it and it started to just become a part of my personality, um, which I think a lot of us do when we're young, you know, because we're struggling to quote unquote find ourselves or, or really feel a sense of identity and who we really are. So we struggle and we feel confused and we're searching uh, and fumbling through that process, right? I think we all go through that, especially during those years. I was in New York City listening to absolutely horrible music. I remember this day, cursing God kind of lyrics. I mean, just a, just horrible stuff and just feeling so dark and like, I was good with that, but I wasn't, you know? And the, the guy who was driving the car pulls over on the side of the road and in the middle of Wall Street, just asked point blank, asked me a question. He said, what would make you happy? And this was like such a strange moment. What made him pull over? I have no idea. What made him ask me that question? I never knew. This answer just came out of my mouth. And I said, if I go back home to Connecticut and do what my old boyfriend is doing, I'll be happy. What my old boyfriend from high school had found Jesus and was going to this church. And so when I answered that, I was like, where did that come from? That was the furthest thing from my mind. As soon as I said it, he looked at me and deep in my eyes and he said, then you need to do that. And it felt so profound, like I had permission to go and make this huge change. And so I did, I just, I just packed up everything. We broke our lease, came home. And I just pictured how this was going to work out. You know, I thought I would go home. I thought everything would just be like it was before, you know, back to my old childhood home. I would feel more stable. I would feel the goodness of my youth, you know, that it would just kind of all go back to normal. Well, I got there and it, that's, that didn't happen, you know? So it wasn't the same. You know, the environment was different. The house was different. And I felt very, very isolated back in my old room again, but I wasn't the same. And I couldn't run away from that. I had brought it home with me. and I was home alone and I felt ultra depressed like the whole world was having fun except me and I just was eating and eating I remember just overeating like absolutely stuffing myself like emotional eating and I had been you know pretty thin my whole life um and I had gotten like a little chubby I gained some weight I think through emotional eating and just not caring anymore and it's just like I felt so bad about myself at this this e particular evening New Year's Eve then it turned midnight and I just thought, of course, the whole world is celebrating and here I am alone. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, 1995. So all the happy new years ended and the partying went quiet and there I was sitting on the bed um, in silence. 
surrounded by all these wrappers and this food. And all of a sudden, I hear a voice and it says, you know, if you throw all that up, you'll feel better. And it was, it felt like the earth stopped. And I was like, taken aback, what did I just hear? But the suggestion came to me that if I threw up, I would feel better. And what's so crazy was, I knew that if I listened to this voice, I was opening up a door that I wouldn't be able to close. I don't know how I knew that, but I knew that. And I gave it a minute and I said, well, who cares? I'm in such a nothing place. I could care less, so I went and I did it. And I threw up for the first time and of course, it's followed by an adrenaline rush, so I felt adrenaline and, and I felt better. And then I just sat there and that was beginning of a huge, huge downward spiral. This first painting is called The Perfect Storm and it depicts the beginning of this downward spiral, an individual who's clutching their head, who's lost their identity and their face is marred. You can see thoughts of confusion represented by the roots in their head. There's drying up leaves showing that the life is withering from the tree that is their life. In the background, you see a portal or a doorway that's opened, which really describes that one evening on New Year's Eve when I took the step to open the door to something that I knew I wouldn't be able to close. Within the doorway, you see branches and very subtly some birds sitting on the branches that have a lot of meaning for later in the story. Around um, the entire scene is this brocade background and if you look at the symbols within the pattern, there's more birds entangled within these vines that kind of twist and turn throughout the pattern. I hope this really blessed you. Thanks for watching and please watch parts two, three, and four for the rest of the story.